Hi guys, Andy from Andrew Walsh Personal Training. Just doing a quick video to help people who are wanting to do the Tough Mudder. Well, it's the day after Tough Mudder and I did it yesterday. Feeling a bit sore today. So I'm just going to go through some training tips for you. What to, what, what to wear, some training to do. And uh, hopefully it will prepare you for the Mudder. Well, what I did, I'm a pretty good runner anyway. So I just did general cardio, so six to eight miles just you don't have to go too excessive on the cardio because there's obstacles so you'll be waiting for a little bit anyway to get over them because there's queues so don't be too worried about reaching the 12 plus miles that it says as long as you've got pretty good general cardio you should be fine at it and then people walk through it anyway so it just go at your own pace and there. Upper body strength is a must. You need to work on your upper body strength, so pull ups, press ups, anything like that, just to get them uh, arms and shoulders and your back strong. Because obviously, the funky monkeys, it's called the monkey bars, is quite a challenge. So, if you've got no upper body strength, you're going to struggle at it and you'll always be in the water. And uh, the walls as well, Hero Walls and Glory Blades, the, there's quite a few walls in it. So, that are quite challenging so you need to work on upper body that's the only thing I, I would recommend focusing um, the majority of your training on is upper body strength because obviously if you're helping other people over stuff as well then it's going to be quite hard for you so upper body strength definitely and uh, just stability in your ankles as well because I found that the terrains was quite all over the place loads of mud and uh, you couldn't it's really slippy so you you're always like running like you're drunk if you will it's like falling left and right just try to get over the mud so just make sure you strengthen your your legs and your ankles up and wear some uh, good trainers with good am good ankle supporting i did it in just an old pair of trainers and my trainers pretty much fell apart because they were just that old so i'd probably just buy a cheap pair of trainers that you don't mind trashing but i just wore one of my old pairs and like the sole just ripped off in the mud it was that bad so I was practically running with like one trainer so yeah trail runners are met, are met to be quite good for it but obviously you want a, a trainer that's going to support your ankles because obviously you can go over on your ankles in that mud because it's like going into a bog you'll be running through it and it'll just suck your foot down so just uh, point your toes as you go through it that's what the majority of them say is point your toes when you're going through the mud but if you just, just take your time for it you don't have to sprint through the mud just go at a steady pace you should be fine and uh yeah de definitely strengthen your ankles do a bit of leg training just because they've got some pardon me got some uh, hills as well that are quite challenging so if you've not really done any strength or endurance training on your legs i would recommend doing a bit of weights on them so obviously the hills are quite steep and uh general running as well so six to eight miles at least probably give yourself about six weeks to train for it if you want to if you're going for a time then go for probably a little bit more distance i'd probably go for about 10 and uh, just work on your upper body strength probably give yourself six to 12 weeks training and just keep increasing your your speed as you do it but it, it it's not a race as they say it's more it's more of a challenge uh I try to run fast through it as well in, in some places, but it's just impossible. The mud slows you down. You can't find your balance and you'll fall over and, and end up injuring yourself. So what I recommend you do is just take your time through it and uh, just just attempt all obstacles. Obviously, there's probably going to be some things in it that you find quite hard. Obviously, like if you're not the best swimmer, but you can swim or you're scared of heights, then obviously the water plank one, the 20-foot jump off the plank it into the water can be a bit scary for some people but there's loads of support loads of volunteers there will help you if you struggle but i'd just do it just do it and uh some tips on some of the obstacles that that i that that i did well i attempted every obstacle and completed it i've got my little headband to say i'm now a tough mudder so i don't know if it's obviously i'm recording it on an ipad so it's the other way around but you get the gist and uh, yeah, so the first ones were the hero walls. 
that was the only hard obstacle I found. So if you're doing it on your own, you're going to have to, if you've got not a lot of, got of upper body strength, then you're going to have to get someone else to heave you over the walls or you just pull yourself up. But they've got a little button on the, the horizontal button across the the wall anyway. So you, if you jump onto that, you can leave yourself up like I did. I didn't really need much help to get over the walls. I was helping other people over them because my upper body strength is pretty good. But yeah, definitely, definitely uh, think about getting some help if you're doing it on your own, if you've got no upper body strength because you've got two walls to get over which are quite high so electric heel that's the the water one with the electric wires dangling down which, which you do like a leopard crawl on your stomach under it the shocks aren't that bad i thought i thought they'd be worse than, than they was to be fair the the tip that i did was when i was uh doing it i was like zigzagging like through the wires so I didn't get shocked as much. I did get shocked on it, but towards the end, as I was getting out, one caught me. And the the shocks are bearable. They don't hurt you. It's just like a whoa, what was that? So don't be scared of them. It's they're not deadly. So yeah, just do that. It's quite sli uh, slippy, slidey through it anyway. So you can just use your elbows to to crawl through it and just do it fast, and you'll be fine. And uh the hardest one that I found was mud mile, like it's like trenches and boggy, or you jump in and it's up to your waist in mud and sludge. So you, it's rocket. It's hard to even move through it, but obviously keep your do big strides as you're going through it, and that obviously you cover more distance. But you, you like you need to tie tie your shoes on and uh, point your toes just to keep your like your trainers on. So. Yeah, that's a a little tip that I'd give you for that one. And if you if you're doing it on your own, I would recommend getting someone to help you because it's all sliding. You can't really get a grip of anything. So obviously the whole the whole objective of tough tough mother is teamwork. So you will need some help to get out of it. So there is one where you lie on your side and roll through the mud. So that that's a pretty easy one because you're not actually buried in the mud. You're not on top of it, rolling through it. And I, I I use that technique for a lot of the other mud, mud obstacles. So the, there's one uh, when you you're running through, like you jump in it, and it's really sticky, so you can't actually move. There must have been about fifty people in in this one pit not moving. So I just rolled across them all just to get out of it, and then helped other people out. But the longer you stay in the pits, the more harder it is to get out. So you need to keep moving and get out as fast as you can. So. That's the same with all the mud obstacles. It, 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 if you hang around in them and stick into them, you're just going to get uh, caught up and it's going to be hard for you to get out of them. So move fast through them. Don't think about it and just do it. And uh, Everest, it's not it's not massive. It's not as hard as you think. The only tricky thing is is getting the speed up, up the wall. So you need to run as fast as you can and either grab onto the wooden ledge at the top or grab on someone's hand if they're up there. I tried it three times. It took it took me three times to get up it because I, I kept getting dropped and I, I kept uh, sliding off the ledge. So eventually, I, on my third go, I got up there. But yeah, it is quite it is quite a challenge, but it can be done. It's not impossible to do. So I would recommend running as fast as you can. Don't stop running, otherwise you'll just slide down because they spray it with water as well. The hose, so it's all greased up, so you'll you will be sliding down it. So. Keep running as fast as you can. Either try and get some trainers with with good grip on them. I, I, I say this because my trainers didn't have any grip on at all, and I was just sliding everywhere on every obstacle. So you need trainers with decent grip, and or and even use gloves as well if you've got a pair of uh, weightlifting gloves. Use them for grip. But if they get too muddy, then you're just gonna have to take them off because I uh, binned mine for the monkey bars because I couldn't get any grip on them because the, obviously if everyone's going through it before you they're all full of mud so all the obstacles is going to be full of mud so it makes it harder for you to get across so I took my gloves off and did it uh, without any gloves on I didn't make it across fully I got about 90% of the way across and then I slipped off because the bar was full of mud so I think if they were, if they were a bit cleaner I would have made it but obviously I didn't so until the next time, that is, I will do it. And then, uh, 
electroshock therapy. There was a big queue at that when we did it, so that's the one when you just got to run through the dangly uh, wires with, which zap you. They've put hay bales in the middle of it now, so you can't crawl under it, so you have to run through it. But again, I got shocked three times going through that, and the shocks aren't aren't that bad at all. Don't be scared of them. There was a big queue at the beginning of it, so they were they were all hesitating to go through. So me and my team just ran through it. So just let's just do it. The more you think about it, the more time you're going to be hesitating, and it's going to back you out of it. So don't think about it. Just do it and run for it. And obviously, that's the last obstacle anyway in a lot of them. So get through that, and you've got your your t-shirt and your headband and you're a tough mother so yeah those are some tips for the course that is i'll just talk through what i wore on the course so uh i wore some compression shorts to wear under my shorts i did it in shorts instead of compression pants i thought it'd be a bit easier it was it it was easy because obviously the less clothing you wear the less water you're going to carry so and obviously you'll dry off faster but there is a lot of water obstacles which uh help which just make you soaking anyway. So I would recommend wearing minimal clothing. I wouldn't advise wearing a costume because there was a few costumes running around and they were hang they were trailing behind people's ankles because they couldn't get them off because they were full of mud. So I would either do it in compression pants or comp or some shorts, t-shirts. I'd wear the the compression top or just a vest. I wouldn't again. I wouldn't wear anything thick because it's going to gather water. And uh, some weightlifting gloves, or if you don't want to wear gloves, don't. But I did it in some gloves, and for 90% of the obstacles, it helped me out. Uh, th there is a few obstacles where there's where you go in the water, especially trench warfare. And uh, I, I got loads of cuts and loads of scrapes on my knees. So some knee pads or some uh, protectors would, would have been good for it if you're wearing shorts. Because there's loads of twigs and branches and root tree roots in the water, which you can't see. So... He was just getting scratched up, and I I had a nice trophy on my knee from a a, a nice root, uh, root scratching me. So yeah, I've got I've got a few wounds from the tough mudder, but that's because I didn't wear any any pants. I added it in shorts. So to prevent that, I would advise getting some uh, either them cloth knee supports or just wear some pads or something to or some pants if if you can to prevent that from happening same with your elbows elbow pads anything like that just all them cloth elbow supports that you can obviously prevent you from scratching your elbows because twigs branches they're the worst for getting you but yeah you you will get scratched and you will get bruises and cuts and you'll probably feel dead sore the next day but it's worth it that's um and the trainers that i wore again i just wore my old trainers which was a bit of a bad idea for me because obviously my soul fell off him so I'd wear a decent pair of trainers well not a brand new pair but a, a pair that you've had for a while and they've still got a bit of decent grip on them or just go and buy a cheap pair of trainers that you don't mind wrecking I, I, I left my trainers at the event because they were just destroyed after it so yeah if you don't mind uh, doing it in pardon me in an old pair of trainers or getting a new pair of trainers that, which you don't mind wrecking do that but grip is a must for that course but don't forget though the mud's going to get everywhere so just definitely get a pair of trainers that's got good ankle support because obviously I've seen a lot of uh, people going over on the ankles so yeah and make sure you stretch of it as well they do, they do do a stretch warm up at the beginning but obviously you do your own stretching to make sure that you're, you're fully warmed up before it and yeah, it's a really good day. I, I, w I would recommend it to anyone. It's a good challenge and it's for a good cause, help for heroes. So yeah, we did the, the North West one uh, in uh, Kalman Lee Estate in Cheshire. So it it was really good. It, the mud, it was really muddy, loads of water obstacles. And if you live in the North West or around there, I would recommend doing that one because it's one of the best ones and I would recommend it to anyone. Thanks guys, it's Andy from Andrew Wells Personal Training. If you need any help or more advice on training for the Tough Mudder or personal training, diet and training programmes, visit my site, andrewwalshpersonaltraining.co.uk. Tweet me at andrewwalshpt. Thanks a lot, guys. Hope you enjoyed this little video on Tough Mudder training. And again, if you need any more help, just feel free to message me. Thanks a lot, guys.